Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. This is Tease and Tease Applied. And today we are here with a special guest, gonna share her journey today. Um, it is October, which is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. We have collaborated with Under Armour and we have an exciting campaign and event to bring awareness. <laughs> thank you for being here with us today and we're honored to share this with you guys. And thank you, Holly, for being with us today. We are excited to hear your inspiring story today. Thank you for having me here today. <laughs> Okay, cool. So Holly, um, would you mind telling us and the viewers just a little bit about yourself, who you are, where you are from, just who is Holly um, away from your journey? Yes. Um, so I'm Holly Quinn and I grew up on a little farm in KZN. We have kiwis there, we do lots of oh. kiwi farming and we have a nursery. And yeah, I went to high school in Peter Marisburg Girls High and yeah, came to Stellenbosch not knowing anyone and started studying at Inkscape. Okay, yeah, so Holly, uh, we would love to hear your story. So, could you maybe take us back to the beginning? How did you first find out about your diagnosis and what was going through your mind at the moment? So, it was last year, uh, so 2023, in the June, July holidays, we decided to go to Botswana for a family holiday. And when I was there, I was looking so forward to, like, you know, spending time with the family and some mm. family friends. Um, but I was just in constant pain in my ribs and mm -hmm. on my spine and I was just so tired all the time. Um, so we had two weeks in Botswana and then when we crossed the border back into South Africa, we booked a doctor's appointment because we at, at that point knew that something was wrong. Mm. Um, got a doctor's appointment and we were told that I 100% had shingles, like there was no question about it, like my skin was numb. So. Oh. I flew back to Stellenbosch a day later. Um, I was here at Inkscape and I just remember like sitting on my chair, not being able to like lean back or have a proper deep breath. And um, then I was like, I actually can't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. So I went to another doctor and she just took one look at me. I was so bloated and like my rib had almost, it looked like it was completely out of my chest is like what it looked like. Yeah. Um, and then I had like this blue and purple rash that just decided to show up. Um, and she, yeah, she took one look at me and sent me to the hospital to go get an x-ray of my chest. Um, and then, yeah, I remember just standing there like with my hands above my head for this x-ray. And the radiologist said, have you never had a chest x-ray before? And I said, no, I've never. So got back, spider to leave for class again the next day. And I got a phone call from my doctor at the time telling me that they've booked me into hospital. They're not too sure how, I'd be, how long I'd be there for. So they just told me to pack an overnight bag. So I got there and they said that it might be fluid in my lungs and I was like okay that's a bit weird um but then my parents phoned me the next day saying that they booked a flight to come to Stellenbosch and um the one morning I just woke up and my mom and dad were next to me bawling their eyes out and I was like what's going on over here um and then yeah about an hour and a half later I just heard my dad say that they found a tumor in in me and it was the size of a rugby ball. It was a stage four sarcoma that was just sitting in my chest. And Ew. which makes so much sense to why mm. I, yeah, I couldn't take a deep breath. My, my lung had completely collapsed and it had grown into like, it was on the edge of my heart cavity, my lung lining, my diaphragm, my rib is shattered. It's still busy healing. The skin around it was numb. So yeah, after that, um, I had to, I was told that I would never be able to have children one day and that was way harder for me to hear than being told that I have cancer because cancer I can fix but mm. not being able to carry my own child is it's one of my biggest dreams as well um, and I was told multiple times that there was nothing they could do um, but then my doctor George Murray he said that there was actually there was one thing and that was just to remove one of my ovaries and freeze it so I can now carry my own children, which is amazing. Um, yeah, got out of surgery that day. An hour later, I was sitting in the chemo chair for my first round of chemo. Um, yeah, and I did chemo every two weeks um, for about seven months. 
and yeah, I just watched my hair fall out and my body just get thinner mm-hmm. and thinner. And then yeah, six and a half weeks of radiation and yeah, had remission. So that was cool. <laughs> Yo, yeah. I just <laughs> want to start crying now. I know it's a lot. This is a very uh, tough journey. Mm. Um, and hearing your story, is it's very painful to hear yeah. that you went through so much pain. Mm. How did you emotionally and physically handle the news? Um, I think from the day I was diagnosed, I kind of just didn't want to accept the fact that it was real. Because, mm. you know, cancer is one of those things where you're like, oh, you hear so many stories about it, but you never like, I'll never have it. Mm. It's one of those things. So I think I was just an absolute shock for mm. like, a solid three months. I think for me it was definitely talking to a therapist got me through it a lot and I think for me it was important to find a therapist that has been through the same thing as I was mm-hmm. so that's what I really really loved about her. That and then also just the support from family, friends and community is just it's so special. Yeah. So obviously every journey is unique to the person um, and their, their life basically so what would you say was one of the most challenging things that you as an individual or you and your family um, went through? For me it was like the most challenging thing was just seeing me look sick and it's, it messes with you so so much like you know having hair gives you so much confidence yeah. you know and then it just being ripped away from you was one of the most challenging mm, things I've yeah. ever had to do. And it's also like I always constantly felt Ooh. guilty for it's so wrong, but like mm. no one should have to feel like that. But being 19 years old and seeing your parents so stressed out and your yeah. siblings so stressed out, it took me a long time to realize that it's not actually my fault. Days when I would just have to, like there were days where I just felt numb and like I just smelled like chemical all the time. So mm. whenever um, we'd have visitors come to see me, I would just have to put on a bright smile, mm. show them that I'm going to be okay. Cause I think the worst thing was scaring people, you know, like I didn't want them to be like, oh, she's battling right now. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to be like, oh, she's being good. Like yeah. she's doing good. She's fine. She's strong. Everything's okay. Everything's okay. That's a very like selfless thing. Yeah. yeah it takes a strong person to mm-hmm. be able to do that. Yeah. Sure. How did you say that you um, going through that difficult time and seeing your body changing and mm-hmm. your relationships obviously with people being affected? What was the one thing that gave you the most strength to be able to face the challenges? I think it was just being so grateful that I have the love and support of Mm. family around me 24-7. Like, Mm. I would never be left alone. I always had someone at the side of me, whether it was my dog or my Mm. gran or my grandpa. Like, that gave me so much confidence in knowing that I could beat this. I think, like, it is... It's easier said than done but Mm. to have a positive mindset is so important like but you also need to remember that it's okay to have a good day and a bad day it's normal Mm. um but i think for cancer patients especially like it's okay to have a bad day like there's days where i would just literally just want to sleep all day and then days where i'd be like oh my gosh let's go do something Mm. you know it's just you need to trust the process and it's so hard and you feel so crap all the time but you're gonna get through it and you know you change into like a better person at the end of your journey and you have a complete different outlook on everything so i think it's important to know that it didn't happen to you it happened for you and that was something that i really had to Mm. dig deep to accept and i completely accepted it and i love that i did so kind of directing the conversation now to Mm. um our campaign that we're running with Under Armour, which is a breast cancer awareness fun run. Mm-hmm. Um, we will be hosting live events across South Africa and having so many communities coming together and participating in the fun runs um, with Under Armour to basically just spread awareness um, for breast cancer, but also cancer in general, because mm-hmm. everything is a massive fight. So how does something like that, a campaign like that, make you feel? It makes us feel like, you know, I don't even know where to start with it. Like oh. the, I've had many people run races for me and I just feel so empowered. You know, you're like, mm. people can see and people yeah. care and it does make our spirits get lifted. Mm. You know, even if it's just seeing that the cancer yes. symbol, like it just makes me smile, mm. honestly. Like it's just, we are being heard, yeah. you know, it's not like, 
we're just fighting this by ourselves. Like there's a whole community behind every single patient and it's really, really special mm. and it's got a really deep meaning to it and I'm, I'm so grateful for anyone who does mm. run. Why do you think it's important for people to actually participate in events like this? Um, to spread awareness, you know, I think spreading awareness for cancer or breast cancer, it's, mm. like I said before, it's, it helps so many people. Mm. And even if it's just to bring a smile to someone's face, like you've made their day, yeah. you know. Yo. Yo. Thank you so much, Holly, for sharing your story with us today. Um, yeah, your like your positivity throughout this journey like is really inspiring, and the way that you have like a good outlook still on life, and the way that this that you say this changed your mindset um, and made you a better person is really inspiring, and I hope that um, yeah we can reach a lot of people through yeah. this story. So yeah, um, thank you again to Holly, um, and yeah, if you guys want to know more about our upcoming event or want to get included, get your ticket. Um, all of the information will be down below in the, in the caption. Um, yeah, and we're so excited for everyone to get involved, involved, raise awareness, and just um, get to spread so much positivity around this um, this whole event. So thank you so much for watching, and be sure to subscribe and like. <laughs>